this weekend marks the end of the Easter holidays and when lockdown started you were probably expecting to go back to school tomorrow but we're not because lockdown has been extended which means we are stuck in our houses for at least another three weeks and I would like to think that we're going to be going back to school after May half term so that you do get an end to year 10 and it's not just you're not allowed to turn up to school anymore after this date back in March. Um, so I'm optimistic that we are going to be going back to school after May half term. The idea of not going back to school until September seems horrible and whether you like school, whether you hate school, it, it would be nice to get back to school just to have something to do um, and to see other people that aren't the people that you live with um, every single day. But we are now in the position where we face the next few weeks of you having to teach yourselves GCSEs. For some of you this is going to be easier than others and the most important thing over this period is we get through this as well as we can and I am not talking about your schoolwork here I'm talking about your physical and your mental health. Now your schools are probably going to disagree with me on this but your schoolwork at the moment has to take second priority to your mental health. If you do absolutely no schoolwork during the day but you've managed to go for a little walk you've managed to make someone else a cup of tea and make their day a little bit nicer and a little bit easier if you spent the day looking after your younger siblings so that your parents or whoever else is at home with you can work so that they can afford to feed you and that you don't lose your house, that is more important than doing your schoolwork at the moment. Now, I am sure your schools are going to be putting you under lots and lots of pressure to turn up to this Zoom lesson to submit this work on time, but the reality is for a lot of you that just isn't going to work. And as angry as that may make schools, that is okay. The most important thing this moment, at the, at the moment, is that we get through this as well as we can. I don't want to say we get through this happily because nobody is happy with this current situation. But if what you need to do is prioritise helping around the house so that, you know, whoever can go to that Zoom meeting, if you need to keep your little brothers and sisters quiet so that somebody can actually get on and do some work, that is more important than um, doing your maths. Everyone is in the same situation, so rushing ahead, trying to use this time to get ahead or trying to use this time to beat everyone else is absolutely pointless because when we get back to school, everyone is gonna be in such a different position because everyone has such different home lives and everyone is gonna have such a different experience or ability to learn GCSEs from home that getting so far ahead is kind of pointless. But if you are in the fortunate position that you can study GCSEs at home, then this is how to do it. The first thing you need to do is find out what you need to know. Now, this could be kind of like drip fed to you by teachers on a day-to-day -day basis. They say, this lesson is about this, here are the learning objectives. And if that fits in with what you've got going on at home, then great, you can do that. But you might want to get kind of like the whole unit's objectives ready there in front of you because, say for example, maths, you might find factorising a little bit easier than expanding brackets. So you, while you're at home and doing so independently, can spend a little bit more time on this as opposed to spending a little bit more time on this. There are some advantages to doing this independently because you can really have the time to focus on the bits that you find hard and then you don't have to wait for other people in the class to catch up or you don't have to feel under pressure to pretend that you understand something just to keep up with the other people in the class. You really can work at your own pace but you do need to know which bits you're working on. So find out what you need to know. Now for science, maths, geography, history, um, over my website, if you sign up to a mailing list, you'll get a link to free revision guides which basically have lists of things you need to know and then links through to video which will teach you the bits that you need to know. You do not have to print these off. Just use them on your phone as PDF documents or however you want to do it. We do not need to print off loads and loads of stuff for this because 
let's be honest not everyone has access to a printer and paper at home and nowhere's delivering and nowhere has stock of ink if you don't want to do this or i don't have it then uh, your vision guide or textbooks or the list on BBC Biteside or the specification from the exam board will just have a list of things you need to know. And then find out where you should be, roughly should be, where your teachers roughly expect you to be when you go back and then focus on those things. Now, in the course of normal revision, this is generally not good practice, but if you want to spend a whole day doing biology, then why not? I mean, at the moment, the rules are very loose and fast about revising. And again, your schools are not going to like me telling you this. But um, if you want to spend a whole day doing maths, I mean, I personally quite like maths. So, like, my worst nightmare would be a whole day doing English. God. Um, but, you know, if you just want to focus on the subjects that make you happy, then go for it. In, in the long, long term scheme of things if you don't get that GCSE in your foreign languages because you didn't do any revision for it over this period it is not going to be the end of the world. Spend this time really focusing on the core subjects, the subjects you want to do at A-level, the subjects you need to get the good grades in. So first thing you do is find out what you need to know and then go through that and say I, I, I'm fairly confident I can do that bit but I'm not very confident that I can do that bit so identify gaps and you can go back over everything you've done so far in year 10 and in year 9 and identify gaps there as well then once you've identified the gaps once you find out which bits you need to know is that you go and fill in those gaps and learn them now, this could either be like by your teacher, the work that your teacher sets you, so they might be doing Zoom lessons, they might be setting YouTube videos to go and watch. And if they do set your YouTube video to go and watch and you don't like the style of that video or you don't understand the style of that video, go and find another video to watch about it. Now, for science and maths, you are spoiled because there are loads of us that do science and maths videos. There are also loads of people that do English videos. So if your teacher sets you a video and it's not your favorite science YouTuber, who I completely understand, that might not be me, I'm okay with that. Go and watch someone else's video on the same topic. Getting um, the same bit of information and told to you in a few different ways will really help you understand it better. And while you're watching these YouTube videos, make some notes. Don't just sit there and watch. Make some notes as you're doing it. And then practice questions do as many practice questions as you can whether they're practice questions from my workbooks for the workbooks your school has given you or questions that your teacher set you you know if your teacher sets you with a lot of questions and you're kind of like okay i've done those i'm still not like a hundred percent confident on the topic i kind of feel like i kind of get it but you know i've tick done the school work so my team she thinks I get it there is literally no harm and going and finding some extra questions and doing extra things by yourself now we should be quite close to finishing kind of like the first year of the course so kind of like biology paper one um not quite so much for maths because the papers are all mixed up but there is no harm in going and trying a past paper so these are all up on the exam board's um, website you can go download these for free you do not have to print them off you can have them on a screen on your phone and then write on a bit of paper you do not have to spend loads of time money and bits of paper printing off loads and loads and loads of things because it's just going to go straight in the recycling this is a good opportunity for you to really work on your study habits um, and find about how revision works best for you. So is it watching videos? Is it making videos potentially? Is it working with flashcards? Is it, um, you know, writing a set of questions and then swapping them with your friend and then kind of like um, answering the questions that your friend has set for you? This is a brilliant opportunity for you to really, really focus on how you learn best because I'm assuming that there are going to be GCSEs in 2021, but if there aren't, and you're in the same position that the current year 11s are in, it is going to be your performance in year 11 that your teachers are going to be taking into account when they set grades. So I do not think any other year 10 as much, a group of year 10s is going to believe me as much as I say when things like classwork, end topic tests and mocks are really important. So using this time wisely to 
understand how you learn to try lots and lots of different techniques is really important. There are a few other things you can do with this time is think about A-level choices. Now I know these were a really, really long way off, but once you take out the school day, the actual traveling to school, you know, gossiping, moving between lessons, you might find that you have some spare time lying around with not much else to do and you are bored or sitting on the house looking at the same number of walls and with the same faces of people. So let's start to imagine the future. Let's start to imagine what you were doing in five years time because hopefully we would have left the house by then. Oh my god I can't imagine. Anyway we will have left the house in five years time. Um, in five years time, where are you going to be? Are you going to be in work? Are you going to be at university? What steps do you need to get yourself there? Because A-level choices are important and we start talking about A-level choices quite early on in year 11 and when we come to fill in UCAS applications in year 12, it is absolutely heartbreaking to talk to a student who has a very, very clear idea of what they want to do at university and then they realise they've made the wrong A-level choices. For example, physics is a really good A-level to choose because it teaches you lots and lots of skills um, that are really, really transferable. And for things like um, law, it is a good choice. But it doesn't necessarily automatically seem like that. So I'm not saying you have to make different decisions now. I'm not saying you have to start filling your UCAS application form now. But just go and have a look. It's kind of like... Go do fantasy university travel. Um, look at things like T-levels, not just A-levels. You can do T-levels in science. You can do T-levels in uh, lots and lots of different things. You can do degree apprenticeships in things like policing. There are lots and lots of pathways into things that aren't necessarily very well known. Um, but now you've got a bit of time, you can actually research them. Um, I have so much stuff coming for you guys at the moment. Um, I know lots and lots of other teachers are doing lives and putting out loads and loads of stuff. Um, I'm busy looking after my kids um, and I get the weekends to make videos and do work. Um, so I know it maybe seems like I'm not here very much for you, but I am. Um, and I will be here with you the whole way through year 11, year 12 and year 13. Ouch. Mm, love you too, Krim.